guys, this is AJ again with Real Food for Dudes, and uh, welcome to the next video segment. What we have here today is I'm going to talk a little bit about knives. I did a video before, but it was a little long and not really to the point, no pun intended. So today I'm going to talk about the most common used knives and what makes them special or not special. Okay, they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, but pretty much what you want is a knife it's, uh, which, which has a full tang, which means a handle, you can see, it's not attached between a piece, a couple of pieces of wood. The metal goes all the way to the bottom, and it's kind of capped with the metal. This is a better quality knife, and it won't fall apart when you're using it. A lot of the less expensive quality, uh, less expensive knives that you'll get in some discount department stores, they're great. They may be $9.99, but in a year or two, um, with washing, with use, it's going to fall apart, and the balance is not going to be there. So it's not going to be as easy chopping. The most important thing to remember about knives is a sharp knife is a safe knife. Why? Because it won't slip while you're cutting. If I'm cutting a tomato, which I do have a video on, it bites right into it and slices it evenly. And because the blade is balanced, my hand is a lot less likely to get tired, which is important. A lot of people don't like cooking or chopping or preparing vegetables because it's tedious and their hands hurt after a while. Properly balanced knife won't do, uh, won't <coughs> do that for you. Okay. The different types of knives. These are the most common knives used. There's a ton of other styles, and I've got them listed on my website if you want to go see, but the, the most common one is the chef's knife or the cook's knife. Um, they usually come in 8, 10, and 12 inches. This is an uh, 8 inch blade, um, and all it is, you see how they have the rounded blade, so it makes it easier for a sawing motion like that to kind of cut. And it pivots right here, so it makes it very easy to cut, to chop, and to dice. Um, so this is usually my go-to knife and my favorite one. The second one, it's really a Japanese version, uh, but it's very common in America today. It's called the Sentoku knife. Okay, and you see it looks like a mini cleaver almost. It's not, but it uses the same function as a cleaver, having the wide blade, so you can use it to scoop up what you've uh, just uh, finished cutting. Um, and it's also hollow ground. What that means is it has indentations cut out in it, so if you're cutting meat or fish, it won't stick to the blade. It'll come right off for an even and a more better slice. The, uh, it's not as rounded as a chef's knife. I don't know if you can see that, okay? So it doesn't have the same rocking motion when you cut. But I like this knife also, it's, uh, also especially if I'm cutting things and I want to scoop it up. I try not to scoop it up with the knife blade because you can dull the knife blade and I prefer not to do that, but sometimes it's helpful. Okay, third most common knife is the carving knife. Now you notice, this is the same size lengthwise as this, but it's much thinner. The reason being is because you don't need all this blade surface for what you're doing. In fact, slicing a turkey or ham or roast, um, the extra blade surface gets in the way and holds the knife up from cutting through evenly. This is small, it cuts through a roast nice and evenly without even taking the blade out of it. Um, so this is a carving knife, very good tool. All right, the next most important is the paring knife. I use this for everything. It's short, two and a half inch blade, um, and I can very easily put my thumb on it. I'm total control over this. I use this knife for almost anything. And you can notice also, so this has a full tang as well and a metal cap at the back. And that's what I always recommend for knives, that you have those features in place. The last item is a honing steel, not to be confused with the sharpening steel. A sharpening steel sharpens the blades by taking piece, pieces of metal off the blade to make it sharper. A honing steel unbends the blade. At a microscopic level, this bait blade kind of bends over like that. And what the honing steel does is it makes it straight again so you can cut again just as sharply without uh, having to, uh, to sharpen it. Now you will need to sharpen your knife eventually, but um, you shouldn't have to do it every time you use it. It should be a couple of times a year, maybe. Um, and this honing knife keeps it sharp so you don't have to sharpen it. Every time you sharpen it, you reduce the lifespan of the knife. I've had my knives for about uh, close to 20 years and they've served me well, a little beat up, but uh, nothing wrong with that. And they cost about $100, which is reasonable considering the amount of use I have out of it. So the most important tool in the kitchen is, is your knife set. If you can't afford the whole set and there are sets that I want that I can't afford, um, buy a good, uh, they sell them in, in packs of two or three, the chef's knife, the, uh, the paring knife, and the carving knife are all you need, okay? Or even if you get these. Um, that's all you need uh, to, to, to cook 
almost any meal in the kitchen. So that's AJ, and that's uh, uh, a little bit about knives. So thanks, guys, and take care.